your radio quick? Yeah. Okay. L let, me, let me do this. Let me, let me start with an opening statement, and then I'll take your questions. Th I apologize, but Andy Reid, what can I say? All right, so um, first of all, number 14 in the country for a reason, okay? Um, tight end number 86. Boy, we didn't have a lot of answers for him in the first half. Um, I thought we got a little more physical with him. Mac made some hits on him, slowed him down a little bit. I think we were, by and large, you know, able to cont contain number 19. The quarterback was really the key. He hurt us a lot with his legs. Um, very impressed with his ability to make plays when they needed plays. I thought that uh, the, the fake field goal was a brilliant call. Uh, they outcoached us on that call, no doubt about it. Okay, we didn't have a guy working to contain, and um, they executed that perfectly. That was obviously a huge play in the game. Um, and so I tip my hat to South Dakota State. Um, but I think, I, I think that this is a game that we should have won. Two missed field goals. We don't get up and down with the ball on the, on the nine ball that would have made it a, uh, on, the, on the first uh, score that got intercepted in the end zone. That guy was wide open. Chris, you know, if he does it ten times, nine times, he's going to put it on him on time. He just waited that extra second, and the safety was able to get over the top. Um, just, you know, squandered some opportunities. And I thought, uh, I thought our kids continued to fight. And uh, I think what we saw tonight was, a, a, was a, a very mature team in South Dakota State who executed it timely when, when they needed to. And, uh, and that was the difference in the game, in my opinion, was the maturity of their team. They didn't hurt themselves with, with penalties. Um, they were able, by and large, to hold on to the football. We got the one takeaway that did lead to a score. But obviously, I was very pleased with our ability to throw the ball tonight, Chris's ability to lead our offense. I thought Brian called a brilliant game, gave us opportunity after opportunity. And... Uh, this one stings without a question. I mean, you don't get very many opportunities. I think this is the highest ranked team we've ever had come in here out of conference. And it was an opportunity for us to really have a program defining win. Um, it's, it's hollow, as I told our young men tonight. This is a hollow feeling right now because I think uh, our guys know that, uh, that the opportunity was there. Um, you know, the score right before halftime was critical, gave us some momentum. And uh, even though they came out and put one in and made it 24 7, we didn't flinch. Our guys went down and answered with scores. And uh, I think that gives us hope. But uh, as I said, right now, that's pretty hollow hope. It's, uh, it's a painful feeling. And uh, just really impressed with the way our guys continue to fight, regardless of the circumstances, all the way down to the onside kick. You know, it was a very good call by the side judge there, by the way. Um, I was standing right there. And it was, it was close, but he made the right call. Um, Herbie's hand, our foot was out of bounds when he touched the ball. And if it hadn't been, we were going to get the ball. And we were going to get the ball in good position to be able to go down and score. And I don't think they would have stopped us, quite honestly. And so. Uh, um, with that, I'll take your questions. Well, we got to make kicks. I mean, that's the most obvious thing. Um, we got a senior place kicker who, uh, who I think is ha has plenty of talent and plenty of ability, and that's a six-point swing right there for us. Um, we we have a freshman, redshirt freshman. Who says I, I didn't? I didn't know that we were. You know, the, the timing was off a little bit for us on the on the one that got blocked. That was a critical play in the game. A very critical play in the game. You know, we kind of fall asleep. It's it, extra points are not automatic, and you know, credit again to South Dakota State for continuing to compete right there. Um, and so the, the, those those in particular, and the one, I mean, we just had a we had a really good play dialed up, um, and and Herbie was wide open on the on the first touchdown opportunity we had and Chris just I think it was almost like he was too open he just kind of patted the ball that one extra time great job by their post safety getting over and, and, and intercepting the ball but that should have been six now a year ago I don't think we fight the way we did tonight because I don't know that we have the ability to, to, to open things up and I thought Jabari and, and Herbie had great nights for us and, uh, and and even Edward being able to move move the ball a little bit as we got them worn down up front but, you know, I mean, obviously, Chris did a tremendous job of operating the offense. I mean, when we, when we needed him to use his feet, he used his feet. He got out of bounds at, at, at opportune times. He was an accurate passer, completed the shots that we took down the field. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I think he really took a huge step forward tonight for us. Yeah, he's a huge playmaker for us on the defensive side of the ball, and not unlike last week, you know, when really at times he looked like the fastest guy on the field. You know, the way he closes on the ball, and he's such a sure tackler. I think that was one thing that was really frustrating. Hey, the, Dallas is a huge kid. I mean, he's 6'5", 265 pounds, and, and when he starts rolling, some of our guys did not uh, bring the appropriate amount of juice when they had to tackle him, and I didn't think we wrapped up well. 
you know, uncharacteristic Bryson McCabe on the sideline one time. They throw a hitch. It should be a two-yard gain. You know, ends up being a 12-yard gain and a first down because he throws his shoulder into him, and their kid does a nice job of kind of tight roping the sideline. But we've got to be better tacklers, and we're going to play a physical outfit in a couple of weeks. I'm glad we got a week to prepare. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm angry, I'm disappointed, you know, felt like we put ourselves in a position to win a game, and we refused to take advantage of that. And so we've got to take that step in terms of maturing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, we, we have some things built in to defend that, but we didn't, we didn't operate it correctly. And they executed it extremely well. You know, the one guy that we had peeling over the top, they had sealed and blocked. And so, you know, heck, at least get the guy on the ground so we can continue to play defense. But, you know, what I'm telling you right now, it was a great call by them. I tipped, their, tipped my hat to them. It was a huge play in the game, and that's got to be a learning moment for us. But that didn't define the game. That did not define the game. We had other opportunities. Kind of what I expected. You know, if you've watched practice throughout the course of fall camp, and I know he was injured a little bit early, but when that guy goes into the red zone one-on-ones, man, he, he's, he's, he's got very strong hands. He's a physical player. Um, you know, he, he's a very good complement to Mitch, and you throw Kevin in the slot there. And so I think we've got some weapons. You can see that. Now we've got to continue to grow and mature and, and become more physical on the offensive line so that we can have the appropriate amount of balance. But uh, as long as number eight's back there running around, people got a lot to worry about with his legs too. We were kind of looking for that breakthrough moment, right? You know, I mean, they came right down the field and scored on us, and so it was kind of one of those deals where, you know, we had going into the game, we talked about playing with a little bit more tempo, and uh, we did. Um, but at the same time, you know, we, we need to protect our defense at times too, and I think that's what – that's the balance as a head coach. you got to – you know, you don't want to just take the reins off of one side at the expense of the other. You know, we, we've got to have a good balance there, and I thought we did. I thought we, we, we kind of lifted each other up, so to speak. Um, on, on offense and defense, and I, that was awesome. I, I thought our sideline was great tonight. Those guys were very confident and poised and, and continued to play hard, and, and there was no negativity at all. And, uh, you know, there was every opportunity for that to creep in at down 24-7, but our guys kept swinging, and uh, I was pleased with that. The holding call after the deep shot Yeah, that was devastating, and I felt like, um, you know, I have to see it on film. You know, that's just kind of one of those deals. I mean, that would put us behind the sticks on a first down, and, you know, end up pushing us back, making it a little bit longer field goal. And, um, you know, you, I think everybody in the stadium thought after after Lance went up and made that play, okay, here we go. These guys are going to score and take the lead. And, and, and uh, again, it, it just comes down to a mature team. You know, I mean, we've got guys out there making plays. Now we got to take the next step in terms of making plays and being smart and finishing drives and, and taking advantage of points when they're available to us. Well, we've been struggling a little bit stopping them, but I, I honestly thought if we got the first down, they weren't going to stop us either. Um, I didn't feel like that. I, I felt like we had matchup advantages at the corner position with our wide receivers. And so was, all we needed to do is just get that first down, and we were going to be able to go. And so um, I thought about it. Obviously, that's why I called the timeout. But uh, I just felt like at the moment, um, you know, we, we, we needed to get our defense off the field for a little bit longer. And if we could get that first down, create some momentum for us, we were going to be able to, to go. And, you know, I mean, that's – Hey, you know, worked out that time. So we'll see. It seemed like that conversion really got Frisco when he has a third yard run after he's right after that and he throws three touchdowns right away. Good Football's goal. a game of momentum. Yeah. You know, I mean, it really is. And I, I even last week I felt like if our offense could have just kind of had that breakthrough moment and got rolling a little bit, that would have changed some things for us even against Washington State. And so um, you can see how that how that happens. And, and um I think that we're probably going to be a little bit like that on offense this year where we're going to you know, be a little streaky, um, and we'll go from there. Dragon games in the fourth quarter, he's trying to with this group. Uh, it certainly happened tonight, so is this what we're going to see out of these guys the rest of the season? Yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't think we're in the mode right now where we're going to – especially you look at our schedule. It's not, just, it's not just where we're at in terms of our maturation as a program, but we're not playing – uh, a light schedule by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, you know, we're going to play a, another top 10 team in two weeks. And, you know, by the time we get to Weber State, they'll probably be a top 10 team. And then Portland State will be a top 10 team. And then Eastern Washington will be a top 10 team. So, you know, it's not going to get any easier. Um, but I know this. Uh, I know we're making progress. You know, th this is a really good football team that we played tonight. And, 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 again, I think we had every opportunity to be in this game to win it down to the stretch. And, and you know, heck, we were. He seems like he was kicking so well in the ball camp. 
No, it's the first game competition he's had in two years. And so I don't know if it was nerves or what, but uh, needs to be corrected. You built this big comeback. How were you guys able to stay in this thing? Um, just a combination of all three phases on the game. I mean, the offense started lightening up, and then it just fed the momentum to um, for the defense to step up their game. Yeah, it's, I mean, they did a spectacular job, um, and it was nice. It just gave us uh, that confidence to go out there and then provide for our, our offense the best we could. That kind of screen, people weren't coming up and hitting them, but then you started coming up and hitting them. What changed? Yeah, it, it just it took me a couple of times to see it, and then then I remembered it by the second half, and then um, I just I kind of knew they were going to throw it before they did. Seem to make more clutch plays as the game went on. Uh, what is it about in those moments that elevates your play? You think? Um, I just, I think it's just because I'm one of the leaders on the team, and that's just kind of my, my role on the team is to step up and make plays. You know, and Coach so so we're talking about when things get tough, you gotta gotta grab another gear, and that's just what I try to do. Uh, could you walk us through that late strip of Mangarelli? What's that? That late strip of Mangarelli where they got the ball back trying to run the clock. Yeah, I mean, that's we should have had it. I had it in my hands, and I um, mean, it was a nice trip, but it doesn't count for anything. Could you feel the momentum swing in the second half when they started rolling, and then you guys? Oh, very much so. And then, um, see, our defense still wasn't perfect, but um, we we got a turnover, and then that turnover just kind of fed, and then we started uh, stopping them, getting more third and longs, and it's just kind of just fed. To feel, feel, feel the fire for both sides. The it, it was a great atmosphere. I mean, we have the best fans in the state, I think, in the nation, and FCS level. I mean, even playing at Washington State, our fans are better than those guys. Is, so we had a, we have a great fan base, and it's just incredible to play. Was that big field goal? Um, uh, it was just a great play call. I mean. With the day they saw it, us going hard at almost getting a couple blocks, field goals, and uh, they just it was just a great play call by them guys, and nothing we can really do. Given that you guys are kind of underdogs coming into this thing, number 14 in the country, but you then you give them all you got. What's the feeling like in the locker room? Um, I mean, we're heartbroken. I mean, we we played. We gave it all we got. Um, I mean, we had opportunities, but those guys are good, and they're ranked number four in the nation for a reason. And uh, we just gave it all we got, and and that wasn't good enough today. So we got to get back to the drawing board and get North Dakota in two weeks, and they're just as good as a team as these guys. Chris, you just talked about the run offense, and they got on, finally got some momentum, finally got to see what this group could do there in that second. Yeah, um, I was really excited about how the offense responded well, you know. After the first quarter, it was kind of, kind of struggle, e eased our way into the game. But um, once we got rolling, you know, once the old line really started giving it to them, you know, the whole starting for running backs, we gave me enough time to throw the ball and receivers made some plays on the field today. So much has been made about that was struggles in the passing game and, and dating back to last season. But did you know that you guys always kind of had it in you for a performance like this? And does this signal – a change in the offense and how it can operate this year? Um, dating back to spring ball and summer ball, you know, that's all we really worked on because we knew we had guys that could run the ball. You know, we had a very solid old line, you know. And once, you know, we really put in the work this this um, spring ball and summer just to really harness our passing game. And I think, you know, if we have the right, you know, personnel, right protection, you know, the wide receivers out, out there make some plays. Looks like you underthrew the one that missed that was intercepted. Uh, but then what changed after that? Because then you were just whipping the ball for pretty much the same. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, on that one, um, they just converted to cover two. And then uh, I just saw um, that Mitch converted. Because it was supposed to be a post, but he converted to go. I saw that late. And then, you know, bring number 14, you know, any late ball, that would cost him. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I have time, you know. I have confidence in these guys. They'll they're gonna make some plays on the field, and obviously we saw that tonight. So big ups to the wide receiver group, group for stepping up tonight. Seems like they gave you a little bit of a moving pocket the second half. Was that an adjustment you guys made? Yeah, well, um, it wasn't an adjustment, but you know 
we, we just wanted, wanted me to get on the edge, so if nothing was there, I could create something with scramble drill or just go get some yards. When you're facing off fourth down, call a timeout, convert it, and then you have a nice run up the sidelines. Do you feel like that was a huge momentum swing in the game? Yeah, definitely. I knew, like, as soon as we got that first down, I knew we were definitely going to score that drive for sure. Jabari, first game of Bobcast, they didn't have a performance like this, but also in a loss. I mean, what are your thoughts just overall on this game? Um, I love the environment, first off. The loss is frustrating, but um, I feel like we could respond. and It was a great experience, especially <clears throat> this being the Gold Rush game. And I don't come from, like, I've never got to play in front of a crowd like this. So it's a great experience for me. This is what we can expect from the, the passing game, do you think, going forward? Definitely. I just feel like we have playmakers at the wide receiver position, not only me, but with Mitch, with JJ, with all of our guys. Lance, our freshman receiver, we, we got guys. KK, everyone can make plays. And just with Chris, the kind of poison show tonight, what were your thoughts on the way he performed? I was very proud of Chris because um, though I wasn't here last year, I heard he struggled in the past game, but he's definitely confident. He's confident in his arm, and I am too. Um, coach just tell me to go up there and make a play, and that's just what I try to do. When they, when they line you up like that, isolated on, on the wide side, what's going through your mind? Make a play. <laughs> coach said this, this was an opportunity for a program defining win, but he described the feeling as hollow. But, but is there, are there some big positives that you can take away from this game, although it's a, it's a tough loss? Uh, yeah, there are positives we could take. Um, we see how explosive we could be, and um, – we just got to be resilient. I feel like we got to get our offense going earlier in the game and just make plays, make plays earlier.